Uh, hello student, this is the second clip uh, from the chapter 7 of Theory of Structure. Uh, we have uh, discussed about how to draw the elastic curve from the previous clips and now you understand the benefit of drawing the elastic curve fully, right? And the second uh, part of this chapter, we're going to talk about the elastic beam theory. The elastic beam theory actually uh, can be used, not only beam, it can be used for the frame also. Uh, the basics of this uh, have some important assumptions, such as the cross section of the structure okay, uh, must be symmetry cross section. For this one, you may see this is the I section, and this I section has the spatial section with the double symmetry, okay, double symmetry. It's also similar to the rectangular section, which has uh, both uh, axes in symmetry. And the next, this be made of what's so called the homogeneous material. What is mean homogeneous material? The homogeneous material is the material that has the same material at every point of the structure, such as steel, such as aluminum. They have the same material for every point. And it's also the isotopic material. What does isotopic mean? If you cut this material along the, the web, in this direction and also cut the specimen from the web in this direction and you do the test and if you get the same property okay from uh, whatever direction you cut the specimen that's called isotopic material okay and uh, that is belong to the steel and aluminum and the second uh, important thing is under the force, what the behavior of uh, the material is in linear elastic behavior. Okay, it won't go beyond that to be the uh, the plastic behavior. Okay, just only in the in the elastic and is is linear elastic. Okay, we won't interest it in the region of the plastic behavior or elastic linear elastic so by doing this what we have the Hooke's law we apply so uh, the equation sigma is equal to e epsilon is applied for our calculation and then have transfer load the transfer load at x along the beam length in the symmetry pad such as for this okay if you draw in the front, you will see the load like this. Also, for this beam, the load is going to apply by this symmetry plan of the section. Also, for this one, it's only symmetry plan. Actually, the load didn't apply just the point load. It's going to apply like the uniformly distributed load, but due to the symmetry of the loading. So, we can determine the resultant force as the force that's applying to the symmetry axis and for this one also actually it's going to be applied in the full section top portion of the beam and the resultant of this force is passing to the the symmetry line of the section uh, that's going to prevent what by doing this the torsion the torsion will be equal to zero Okay, only the bending are considered. Only, only bending, bending is going to be considered, considered in this chapter. Okay, no, let's P T in this chapter, and the beam also has the length per depth 
uh, the depth beam is going to be this. This is going to be the depth, okay? And this is going to be the span length. Oh, sorry, let's put it in red. This is going to be the depth, okay? This is a D. And the link between the support and the support we call its span. So for now, uh, the ratio, the ratio, the ratio of L over D larger than or equal to B. 10. So the beam going to be the long beam, not the short beam. So for this, the deflection or the deformation, deformation is only occurred due to moment. No shear deformation actually. Uh, let's say no shear deformation. The deformation only occur in the moment and the pain of normal to the normal to the natural pain before loading limian pain what is mean is the pain here okay before and after is still state line no curve that's mean no shear deformation okay and then if you take the ruler and then you hold one section at A as the fix, okay, and then you pull by a force as B, the beam gonna deflect in the shape similar to this, okay, and then what we have is the beam gonna have some what's so called the, the deflection here, that's mean uh, if you measure this beam for the X, okay, and then you will have this as the deflection and then you will have this as the slope and the slope is going to be the dv by dx okay so this is going to be the curvature of the beam with the positive curvature what is going to be the curvature so you have the v right and then you dip v one time you get the slope okay this is the v you dip the V one time, you get slope. If you dip the V for the second time, that means you're going to get what's so called the curvature. Curvature. Okay. Large force. Large force. Large P. Large P. Going to produce large curvature. Okay. Large curvature. Large D square V by DX square. Okay. And when the beam getting large curvature, the beam gonna gonna have the shape something like this and the radius of the curvature gonna be small okay so it's going to have a uh, very small small uh, radius of curvature okay and by doing this if you if you focus to the point of a small length dx okay your beam your beam your beam we will have the length over here of ds okay and one end of the beam gonna defect for this one for v v another one on the size gonna defect larger to be v plus dv okay to make this small defection occur you got to put the moment into the the beam so it's the defection okay the dv by the x is low and the d square v by the x square going to be the curvature more m more m again more moment okay you will get more more curvature Okay, you may bend the, the beam and then we can find the relationship between the moment and the curvature in the form as this elastic beam theory. Okay, when we use this relationship and you move from the left to the right, the concave upward is positive. So this is going to be have the positive curvature in our consideration. Okay, and you may see this equation may be written down m equal to ei and 
d square v by dx square the moment equal to something something time the curvature if this curvature is large it requires large moment this one is similar to the well-known equation that we have which one is is f equal to kx is for the spring okay if you have the spring and with the force f if you push much force the deflection or the elongation of the spring could be larger okay and this one also if you put more moment the beam gonna defect more curvature and you may see this is a kind of k or the stiffness of the beam okay usually we call this is the fractional fractional stiffness of the beam or fractional rigidity okay and by the elastic beam theory that we use the relationship between the moment and the curvature large moment produce large curvature large force produce large moment produce large curvature okay uh, we come to the double integration method in the double integration method we find this relationship will be related to what we used to have in the static okay to show this we got to find the moment okay before you find the moment what's what this mean we call you find the moment you got to draw the free body diagram for example example if you like to to find uh the the moment uh in this can deliver beam and is subjected to the force by p and then you got to make this one as the start of the x and uh, you may have this is as the what is the x axis and this is going to be the deflection axis okay and what you have is you're going to find a moment okay and before you find a moment you draw the free body diagram the free body diagram of the beam hmm going to be a favorite that camera beam is going to cut at the length of for example of x okay the force p the force p here gonna produce the moment here okay and then actually i'm putting this thing long the moment is supposed to be in the psi convention always in psi convention so we have m equal to this time minus px so the first thing you got to find this as a function and then you can use the mathematics to integrate this equation the first integration will be the the slope okay the next integration will be the deflection however every integration you will get the constant of integration for example if you integrate this path is going to change from the curvature to the to the slope and is equal to integrates of mx dx plus c1 this c1 is the constant of integration we only can solve this constant of integration by boundary condition what is the boundary condition Ajahn? the boundary condition for the fixed support you may see the theta is zero and also the what the the slope is zero and the deflection also zero that's kind of an example of bodily condition and you also sometimes may need to have continuity condition to bring the beam continuous okay to bring the beam, the beam to be continuous to be continuous so the curve of the beam always with the full curve okay like this is one big any kind of curve there is no curve like this because this means the beam is broken already and then you do the another integration so you got the the this is the slope right and you got the deflection for this deflection the integration will provide you the c2 the new another constant of integration so for this simple problem you got to find two 
constant of integration by using the boundary condition or the continuity condition. The side convention, we also follow the side convention that we have seen the engineering statics. Okay, and on the left, oh, sorry, on the right, the moment gonna be gonna be counterclockwise. The downward gonna be plus v. Okay, this is the uh, important side convention that we have. Also, the positive side that we use the slope. Okay, if we move from the left to the right, this kind of slope is positive. And when the slope is positive, that means the V will increase. The V will increase, the deflection will increase. Okay, whenever the deflection increases, that is going to be positive. Okay, and if you move in opposite direction, in this direction, okay, uh, this thing also has the positive side convention. Uh, uh, most of the time, we, 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 we use this uh, movement of x from the left to the right, not from the right to the left, okay? The boundary condition and continuity condition. We know the boundary condition is the known slope and deflection at some specific point of the structure. For example, if you talk about the pin, okay? For the pin, the delta horizontal equal to zero and delta vertical also zero. This is the boundary condition of the pin. Okay, because the pin, you have this, so the pin gonna have both f sub x and f sub y. When you prevent from the movement in x direction, so the delta in x is zero. The same thing when you prevent the move in the vertical direction, so the delta or the friction in the vertical direction gonna be zero. However, the roller, the roller gonna have the symbol like this. Okay, the roller has only vertical f sub y. So for the roller, only the friction in the vertical direction is zero. This one can move in the horizontal direction. Okay, okay. So we conclude that the roller, the roller, the roller, the roller gonna have what? What we have, the delta is zero. Okay, that is zero. Only delta sub v. If for this in the vertical. Okay. The pin, okay, the delta both in the v and h is zero. That's very detail. And the roller that inside, the same thing. The roller inside roller, internal roller, that means it's prevent in the vertical direction. So the boundary condition is delta vertical is zero. The pin also the same thing. Delta vertical is zero and delta horizontal is zero. External pin and no pin in the same thing. And the fixed end, the fixed end, the delta v and delta h are zero and slope also because it's fixed here. Actually, it's have the force. It's have the force f sub x equal to something, f sub y equal to something, that's going to prevent the movement in the horizontal x direction in the vertical y direction. And also, the, the fix has the moment, so it prevents the rotation. It's really simple. You can find the boundary condition by conserving the reaction. If there is reaction in which direction, there is no movement in that direction. If there is no rotation at the support, so that is going to have the moment. Okay, it's, they are they are opposite between the boundary condition and the reactions. And for the free end, sorry, for the free end, for the free end, for the free end, we have v equal to zero and m equal to the if if there is no v and M okay at the free end okay if there is a moment at the free end of or the shear at the free end uh, the value of v and m gonna be equal to that's a pi shear and a pi moment 
And then the last one for the internal pin and hinge. You know, can hinge. We know that. You know, can we have moment equal to zero. So that means that's going to have some value of of delta. This is going to have some value of delta. Delta sub h equal to what? Delta sub v equal to what? And delta equal to what? Okay. And the concept is the known boundary condition always in opposite with the reaction. Okay. Uh, for the bulk integration, like I said, we usually start by finding the moment. To find the moment equation, you got to draw the free body, the acclam, and use equation of equilibrium. And sometimes you need to find the reaction. Okay. And after finding the reaction, you got to find the internal, internal moment. By the same thing, by using the free body, the acclam, cut it at the corner of x and use the equation of equilibrium to determine the bending equation. After finding the bending equation, you plug it in the elastic beam equation and you do the first integration, you get the slope. You do the second integration, you get the deflection. And each integration provides you with the constant of integration. So that means you got to solve for the constant of integration. And by using what? by using the boundary condition and by using the continuity condition as we we has discussed before okay and after you get the constant of integration you just put it back so you get the equation of slope and you get the equation of the deflection okay let us start with a very simple very simple uh, example this one is the cantilever beam. Uh, it's a cantilever beam. This cantilever beam has the constant fractional rigidity. Okay, has a constant EI. It has all constant section along its length. And it's subjected to the foil of P. Okay, and let us find what? Find the equation of slope at P and deflection at C. Okay, by this beam, you have the fix here. Fix here. And if you pick up the ruler and you push the force at the end, you will have the shape of deformed shape, the def defected shape of the beam uh, look like this. And then what they are looking for is they like us to determine this slope and this kind of equation of the deflection. And then the first step, this one, we don't need to determine the reaction. So we just cut the beam for some specific point okay and then we can find the moment by doing this what we have is this is l this is x so what is this this is gonna be l minus x so if you actually you should have the v here v is up okay this is the m you have the summation of moment equal to zero. If you take the moment here, and then it has this kind of rotation along m is positive. So m, m, m plus plus p times l minus x is going to be zero. So we have m plus pl plus pl and minus px equal to zero. So our M is going to be PX minus PL. So we're going to get this. Our equation is going to be PX minus PL. We put this into the equation, into the beam, the elastic beam equation, and we do the integration. When you first integration, this curvature is going to change to the slope, and this is going to be PX square, X square divided by 2. And this is going to be PLX. Okay, we get this equation with the C1 as the constant of integration. And if you do again, you may change this one to what? To the deflection. So we have uh, the deflection for the next integration. And this one is going to be x power 3 divided by 3 times 2 is 6. This one is going to be minus PLX squared divided by 2 plus c1x and plus c2 
as is the new equation for the diffraction and we have we have two two in two constant of integration and what we should have we have the boundary condition what the boundary condition the boundary condition that we have is about is about is about this point this point of what of x equal to zero what happened of x equal to zero at x equal to zero we have the theta equal to zero and we also has the defection this is v okay the v equal to zero at what at a theta at a as a occur when as a occur when the x equal to zero so we have theta sub a equal to zero we have v sub a equal to zero to so for the two to constant of integration okay so now when x equal to zero when x equal to zero what we have is is this is going to be zero zero so or zero this is going to be the slope is zero zero so c1 going to be zero okay and again since the defection here is zero so this is zero at x equal to zero zero so c2 also zero so our equation can be simplified easily can be simplified easily to the form like this and then you can rearrange the equation as you like okay to get an appropriate form and then what we have is the slope at b slope at b so what is this you got to find the x for the b the x for the b and they said the x is going to equal to 2a right is is equal to 2a so you plug the 2a into this equation and then you can rearrange the equation you get the equation from the slope at b in this form for the v sub c for the v sub c this means you want to move from a to c so this x equal to l so you put this one for l this one for l and then you got this one for 1 over ei and then uh, you have inside is the pl power 3 by 6 minus pl power 3 by 2 okay so you have pl cube divided by ei and 1 over 6 minus 1 over 2 if you compute this this is going to minus 2 minus 6 divided by 12 so you're going to get it for minus 4 over 12 that is minus 1 third okay so when you input this this p minus p l cubed over 3 e i with the negative sign okay that's negative sign gonna tell us it's going to move downward okay you may see a lot of equation in the slope and defection table like uh, what we have now uh, is the v max that's corresponding to the one that we already have it on this table as i mentioned before in the mechanics of material we have what we have the the equation the equation we may call equation of of deflection this is the equation of deflection and this is the the deflection okay and this is the equation from the slope and this is the beam okay and what we have is this equation can only use in this region this mean this equation is going to be correct along the length of the beam from zero to the length of L and then you get the maximum theta here and maximum V also at the end and next 
And next, consider the second one. This beam is going to have uh, the curve from here to here. Okay. And then the beam is going to have this portion. Let me change it to, to the light blue. This portion at the state line. This is going to be the state line. Okay. And this is going to be the curve. And then due to the force acting to, to the half of the length. So the first one. The x can be used from what from zero to l over two. So this equation can only use in this portion from zero to l over two. And for the other part, okay, from the other part, this part from l over two to l, you got to use this equation. Okay, to understand this. And also, if you like to determine, for example, the, the, the slope equation, for example, if you like to find dv by dx is going to be the equation of slope, this is going to be what? Minus p over 6ei and internal going to be x squared sorry, 3x squared times L minus x cubed, okay, and you got to dip by the x, and when you dip it, minus p over 6ei is okay here, and you dip inside it, it's going to be 2 times 3, it's going to be 6xL, and minus 3x squared, 3x squared, okay. And then, if you like to determine this, you plug the x into this equation. So the theta max is going to be minus p divided by 6ei. And internally, it's going to be 6 times l times l. So 6l squared. And this is minus 3l squared. And then you get it for minus p over 6ei. And when you minus this, it's going to be 3l squared. So you rearrange this is minus p t divided by two p l square divided by two e i. See, you get this equation. So sometimes, if you like to determine the slope equation, again you just do the differential equation. You will get the result. Next, we come to the the candle beam that sub to uniformly distributed load along the length of the beam. So this equation is belong from zero to the L. Okay, and again, if you have this equation from the deflection, you may determine the slope. Okay, the equation from slope by dv by dx. That is going to be the equation from the slope. And last one, this is going to be more simple. When it's subject to the moment, okay, we got the equation of this, and we can determine everything. If you like, just put the proper location that you like to find. Example here, okay, let we put the number into the example we just discussed. Let the P is 10. That's the P is 10. And the L is 3.6. And then you get this equation. So this is going to be 10. And this is going to be 3 times 3.6. So the equation is going to be the function of x and the, and the fractional rigidity. Okay. And if you set the EI, EI, fractional rigidity, is equal to this number so this is the no number so this equation will be the relationship between the v the deflection and the location x so we can divide uh, one 3.6 meter by every 0.6 meter that's it's gonna be 
and 3.6 and then you get uh, the value of your defection by plugging in the x okay into this equation and then you get the reflection vertical deflection of the beam and then if you plot it you may see it's going to have the shape like this and it will follow what we have this is going to be the fixed support okay the slope here is zero the delta here is zero theta sub a and delta sub a okay that's what we have okay and if you like to find the slope like I mentioned, you just do the different equation of the dv by the x. And if you cannot follow what I'm saying, you may put the video stop it, pause it, and try to think what we are studying. Okay, it may take time, but this thing are sometimes very really hard to understand, especially when you draw the elastic curve. Like I said. You got to develop your own skill to do so. Okay, there are still the simple beam. Before that, we're talking about the cantilever beam. The cantilever beam may be the beam supporting the page hole of your house. Okay, and you also have many, many simple beam. Many simple beam. Many important simple beam. Okay, that's a simple beam. Simple beam have what? Have the pin and have the roller usually okay this beam is what is symmetry okay and then the force uniformly distributed load along the length of the beam so the equation of the beam can be used for the whole length and in the form like this if you like to determine the the equation of slope okay you what you just do the differential equation of that just do the dv by dx and you will get the equation of the slope okay and if the the the, the force is not uniformly distributed load along all the length it's only uniformly distributed load only half the length when it's distributed only this so the first part of this equation is belong to this and for the second part of this, uh, it's move from L over 2. This is L over 2. So that 2 until, until the L. You've got to follow this. And believe it or not, if you put L over 2, L over 2 into this X, and you also input the L over 2, oops, sorry, L over 2 into this equation, you will get the same result of the defection at this point this is called a continu continuity condition that the beam must be different continuously along the length of the beam okay uh, what happened is how to determine the maximum defection of unsymmetric beam okay uh, like we discussed before for the symmetric beam the maximum defection gonna occur at the at the midspan of the beam and uh, the important thing also is the slope at the v max the slope slope must be equal the same thing occur here okay the slope here the slope here is zero to obtain the v max the slope is zero. So we determine the V max. So we start by dip equation. Which equation? We got to dip the equation that the maximum defection should be within. Okay, so we use this equation. And when we dip it, just put it into zero and do the calculation for the x. So that means you finding the position that we have for for what for the slope equal to zero. So we arrive at 
this location okay and then we just plug this equation the x and v max back into back into this equation and you will get what you will get this equation for v max which is look see very very easy to do so okay you got this okay for the beam with the point load uh, we have this in our material test for the so-called the three point loading this loading is symmetry so so the maximum deflection gonna occur here and the slope here gonna be zero for unsymmetric loading like this the maximum deflection supposed to be somewhere here somewhere here okay and you also can determine the Vmax for this for this equation for this equation they only allow us to determine the the value of deflection only along this portion from from what from zero from zero to x so this equation cannot use for the other part okay but anyway can we determine the Vmax hmm? can you you must be okay just time to do so what the Vmax is going to be do the same method as before okay coming to the example this example is kind of a special one simple one is is symmetry okay this beam is symmetry because the shape of the beam is symmetry the loading also in symmetry what happened is this beam subjected three types of loading is going to be one for uniformly distributed load okay uh, one should be pin and one should be roller and it's going to be plus if it's plus like this you're going to use what's so called the principle of superposition so this method is called the superposition method if you like okay it's going to plus this one the beam and then it's going to subject that to the force over here okay it's 40 kilonewton and then you have another beam this is 40 kilonewton per meter you have another beam plus the beam of this one pin and roller however this time the load gonna apply what gonna apply in this location okay and what happened is the defection of this beam can be determined by the equation from the defection table and due to the symmetry due to the symmetry the maximum defection will occur at the middle of the beam and then and then this one going to go up like this and what we have is the slope here the slope here dv by dx equal to zero and it's occur at at l over 2 due to the symmetry and the value of vmax isn't hard to determine it's going to be at x equal to 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 2 meter if you measure from here to here this is going to be 2 meter so what is going to be a Vmax okay follow with this Vmax one Vmax going to determine from here that is going to be and another one going to determine from this beam okay you're going to have large deformation here and smaller and smaller to be here okay and this one going to be in opposite to this one it's going to be large here and going to be smaller sorry 
<laughs> so it's going to be the same between the clean and the blue. Sorry. Okay, let me do it again. Okay, the dog is going to be like this. It's going to be okay about this about this picture. And then this we are going to determine the the deflection at this point. So this is for for two meter. Okay. The same thing, you got to determine. The defection here, that is also 2 meter. And all of them, the layers, plus the blue, plus the green, is going to be the, we map the red one here. So, how we determine the one, this is simple. It's going to follow the defection table. This also follow the defection table because you know that this is what? This is the A. The A is going to be 3 meter and B is going to be 1. Okay. And the L is going to be 4. And the X, the X is this distance. The X is going to be 2. But we cannot determine the defection directly from this luckily if you consider back like this okay in the opposite direction you may get you may get the defection here equal to the defection here for the second and the third gonna provide the same defection at the middle of the beam and you also can prove it by by doing the demonstration with your ruler Okay, by doing that, due to the symmetry of the beam, the maximum defection occurs at the mid span. The point load 40 kilo cost equal magnitude of mid span defection. So you can find by the second one and time two. Okay, and you can prove it if you like. You can prove it by using what? So starter. If you can, can do it. Okay, just put the number into into the unknown, uh, into the variable and do the calculation. You will get the defection at this point of the beam and this point of the beam to be equal. Let go back to do it as your exercise, okay? To check whether it's going to be equal or not. And then finally, when we separate this, we got the defection of this one. And then we have this for what? We have the A of the A is the here to here is going to be 3 so this one going to be B and L going to be 4 and P is going to be 40 and then you determine it at what? at the half of this so you determine this at X equal to 2 so every variable you get it right? For the uniformly distributed load, that's easy. The W, w is going to be 40 kilonewton per meter. The X is going to be 2 meter. And the L is going to be 4 meter. Okay, and you put everything together, you can determine each case easily. Okay, P40. B, B is here. B is 1. X is here. X is, here. X is 2. Okay, and then you also get this, the 40 kiloton N, and X equal to meter, L equal to 4 meter. Okay, you get uh, this right, and put everything uh, together, and to get this, you will have the equation for the maximum deflection, which is the function of the, what, the fractional rigidity. If your beam have large fractional rigidity, the defection going to be small. See? So, if you use the steel, the steel have E of 200 gigapascal, and if you use this one for the aluminum, that is going to be about 70 gigapascal. So, just change from the beam, from the steel beam into the aluminum beam 
you are beam gonna have maximum deflection three times larger because the E of aluminum is less than the E of the steel for approximately T times. And also the I, okay, if you use the big moment of inertia, it also can reduce the deflection. And most of the time we cannot change the material easily. Most of the structure in our steel engineering built by the steel. So we only have the I that we can 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 vary with you may use the large eye or the small eye if you use small eye your maximum deflection gonna get larger that is variable you can play with and for this problem they said the e the e the e is 210 and gigapascal since your calculation is based on the unit of kilonewton you see, we use kilonewton here, isn't here. So the 200, sorry, and 10 gigapascal is going to be going to be 210, 10 power 6 kilonewton per per square meter. Okay, so this is going to be kilonewton per square meter, and this one must be in meter power 4. So when you can compute this, the result will be in meter. And if you like to change meter to millimeter, just time it by 1000. Okay? And you see that the maximum defection occur on this beam is 6.9H, which is smaller than the ratio of, of L span divided by 360. So the beam is fine. It's strong enough. It's stiff enough. Okay? To resist the force. Next problem, uh, let's take a look at this problem. Uh, the previous problem is the symmetric beam. But this problem is unsymmetric beam. They like to find the slope at A. Okay, that's mean they like to find slope here. And the deflection at C is going to be here. Okay, uh, the beam is simple beam with constant EI. So we can separate this beam into two beams, one subjected to 8 kN point load at the mid span, and another one subjected to uniformly distributed load between A and C. Okay, and we have this. And what we have is, we are going to determine the theta, theta sub A on case 1, and we are going to plus this with theta sub A for case 2. And the same thing, the deflection at the middle of the span of the beam of these two loading we will sum them together so we use the so-called with the principle of superposition can you recall the assumption of this principle of superposition first the material is linear elastic okay elastic during the application of the force and also small small some more deformation that is important assumption to use this and we can see most of the time our deformation is small and since the deformation is very really small so the behavior of the material is in linear elastic so we come into this what is going to be what what is going to be the defection you may select this equation follow this okay and if you like, you may put the L over 2 into these two equations. You will get the same deflection, which will follow the continuity condition. Okay. And can you determine this equation, theta sub A? The theta sub A is going to be this one. Okay. And the V sub C, if you like. You can pick from this one the deflection at x equal to l over 2 if you like and i should remind you that actually these two these two both the theta sub both the theta and the deflection 
you can determine them from this. Okay, let's do some practice if you like. And uh, it can be examination. Uh, okay, and you can determine this. And this one, this one is simple equation. Okay, the theta is going to occur uh, on this one and this one with equal value and it's going to be theta max. Okay, and the Vmax also occur at the middle. So just plug it to here. Again, can you use this equation to derive that two equation? I believe you can do. Okay, and then we can put them to get the for slope at A. Just put the number into the first case and put the number into the second case. So the sum of them is going to be the result that we like to have. So the rotation is going to be 56 over EI. And see, it's going to count or is it clockwise. This is clockwise rotation. This is going to be clockwise rotation. Okay, next, find the deflection at C. At C. It's easy. You just put the 4 meter into the X. And then you can derive this equation if you like. Or just put everything into the equation. This is for the first case. And this is for the second case. And the sum of them going to be the total deflection. Again, it's up to what? It's up to, to this EI. Okay, you can talking about the aluminum, you talking about, oh sorry, the steel, and then uh, you can reduce the deflection by changing from the steel into the aluminum. And one of the best way is hard because we didn't use much aluminum beam in our steel engineering application. We can do only change the I, that's moment of inertia. Okay, so another problem is we can decide the basis on the deflection. Sometimes people think they didn't need to decide the beam basis on the strength first. Some of them prefer to decide based on the deflection, okay, because they like their structure to be really stiff. The thing about stiff is more important than the Stinked. Okay, let's see. Let us decide this beam. And the beam have the section of the rectangular with the width of B and with the depth of 2B. So we can determine the I, right? The I is going to be B times 2B cube over 2. That's we have it already. Okay, and the maximum allowable is going to be L over 240. So L is 8 meter, 8 meter, and divided by 240. If you like it in in meter, you just times it by by 1000. That is going to be 33.33 millimeter. So what you like? So take the I up and put the defection, okay, allowable defection to be to be the maximum defection that's occur. And then you get it for 20.8 to 10 minus 6 meter power 4. So this is going to be B time to B cube over 2. You can solve this easily. And you may get the B of 75 centimeter. So if this B is 75 millimeter, the 2B is going to be 150 millimeter. Okay. Okay. And one important thing is, uh, is the defection at the beam going to be the maximum defection? It's maybe not. Because of what? Because the maximum defection of this beam is occur here. Okay. At what? At x equal to 0.4598L. So if you put L of 8 meter, you get the maximum defection of this beam will occur at 3.6784 meter, not at 4 meter. Okay, so if you project this, you may 
taking down here and then you may find the defection here so if you find the defection here and here okay you will get another defection okay so the vmax gonna occur at 3.6784 so the first equation that we have is this one okay if you don't like to use this one you may plug x by 0 0.4598 l every x by this number and then you will arrive this one so this first equation is all right and for the next one again this x okay gonna put into 0 0.4598 put every x into this okay you cannot use this here okay and then you arrive as a new equation and then if you plug everything into the equation you got it for 138.28 which is less than the previous VMAX okay this is a sky of a special condition okay this may be changed if you may modify this problem by changing the two kilonewton per meter that if you say i like you to change this one time to change this one okay you may change this one to 10 kilonewton per meter and let's check again what is going to be the location of VMAX I believe okay this location this location this location gonna be the VMAX location because when you change from 2 to 10 kilonewton per meter the effects of the uniformly distributed load going to be larger than the poison okay that's this kind of interesting thing to do so okay that is uh, the end of method of superposition and also the end of the second clips uh, hope you guys if you cannot catch me up you may watch the clips again and try to pause every point that you start to start to confuse okay and you may repeat it do it slowly this kind of study needs skill need times okay to to comprehend what we are learning so take your time and try to understand what we discussed okay bye bye